Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So, first things first, I want to congratulate Dark Sky 1605 You are the first winner of the What's a Creole Mathematics and Computer Science Challenge. So, well done, buddy. Uh, brilliant effort, too. Beat my challenge in mere hours. Uh, the challenge was a lot of fun. If you've not seen the video, I think it was the video just previous to this one, go back and watch it and uh, try and beat the challenge. It's pretty tricky, pretty tricky. Uh, a lot of fun, and I hope to do more of that in the future. Congratulations again, Dark Sky. You're a legend. Okay, today we're talking about initializing Direct 3D, but just a little part of it. So our objective in the end is to call, this will be in, in, in two videos, I think, uh, is to call this function here, D3D11, create device and swap chain. Uh, but today, particularly, we're talking about describing um, this swap chain here. And first, uh, we'll get through a little bit of theory on exactly what a swap chain is. Um, Direct 3D is very low level and I just want to say if you want to have a bit more fun with uh, 3D graphics you might want to have a look at Unity and Blender. Yeah, we'll probably be looking at Blender later on when we make some models, uh, but Unity is really cool as well. So that's a direct, it's not direct, It's <laughs> that's a 3D engine. So if you want to have a look at some higher level stuff, uh, you don't want to get too bogged down in all of this low level nuts and bolts, have a look at Unity. Alrighty, but let's have a bit of a chat about how the, uh, how the monitor works. Excuse me. Computer monitors refresh their image at some predefined rate, and it's called the refresh rate. So this is usually 60 hertz or faster, uh, 60 times per second. In other words, the picture on the monitor is refreshed, and that means that 60 times per second, the graphics card sends data down the monitor, um, you know, pixel data down the monitor, and the monitor refreshes the image with little blinking red, green, and blue lights. But there's a bit of a problem. The graphics card is not limited to 60 frames per second. So graphics cards are really fast pieces of hardware. They're probably the fastest piece of hardware in your computer, um, other than maybe the CPU. But the graphics card itself is capable of something like 4,000 frames per second. Really, really fast. Um, so the graphics card, the GPU, can get out of sync with the monitor. And this leads to an artifact called tearing. And tearing is where the graphics card updates half of the frame, but at that exact moment the monitor refreshes and what you see on your monitor as a user is half the screen, maybe the top half will be one frame and the lower half will be another frame and you'll, you'll see a distinct cut line in the middle that looks like the image is torn. It looks something like this. Um, I just made this picture in GIMP. <laughs> Congratulations Creel, that's beautiful. Here's a tear line here in the middle. Yeah. It looks something like that. Okay, so the solution to the problem is to create more than one buffer. So a buffer is just a chunk of memory with uh, pixel data. And what we do is um, we have the graphics card render to what's called a back buffer. Yeah, the graphics card draws the picture on a back buffer. And only when it's completely finished the scene, uh, only then does it swap it to the front buffer. So that the monitor only ever sees the completed uh, frames. Good stuff. Front buffer, back buffer. <laughs> but there's a problem. So if the graphics card tries to swap buffers at the exact moment that the monitor refreshes its image, we've still got tearing. And the solution to that is to have the monitor synchronize itself with the graphics card or to, to have the graphics card wait till the monitor is just about to refresh. So when the monitor is just about to refresh, the graphics card can replace the entire front buffer with the back buffer and that way there's no tearing at all. So historically monitors refresh themselves starting at the top left pixel and work downwards, I believe. I don't know where I got that information from. Um, yeah, but they start at the top and they move downwards. So to synchronize your graphics with the monitor was called V-Sync. Yeah, and it still is. And I think that today's monitors don't actually have to work this way, but um, we still use the term V-Sync and we still program in exactly the same way for historical reasons. Um, which brings us to the swap chain. So in DirectX, the object that we use to swap these, uh, these buffers and synchronize with the vertical retrace of the monitor is called the swap chain. And we're only going to be using a single back buffer and a front buffer. But it's possible to use multiple back buffers, and I think that's where the name swap chain comes from. So you're swapping a chain of back buffers uh, for the front buffer, one after another. I think that's why it's called the swap chain. 
Alrighty, step number one, declare and zero a swap chain description. So today we're not actually going to have any graphics at all to speak of, but we are going to declare a swap chain. So I might first of all, uh, we'll make a separate function. I'll call it init d3d and I'll get rid of this inverted commas. Uh, it's going to take an h win, so I'll put that in there. Um, so at the top of your program, if you're following along, uh, just make another function in at d3d and we might actually call that just before we show our window. So I'll call it just here, I think, uh, in at d3d and it's going to take a window handle. I think in the long run that's probably going to return a bool or an h result or something, but um, for now we'll just keep it as a void return value. Okay, now we'll uh, we'll code this down the bottom. So in it d3d and it takes an h wind, it takes a window to a handle, a handle to a window. <laughs> and step number one: declare and zero a swap chain description. Okay, so. Microsoft could have gone with a gigantic uh, parameter list in that uh, function call to uh, D3D uh, create device and swap chain, but what they decided to do was um, kind of organize all of the swap chain parameters together in, uh, in a single structure called the swap chain desk. Um, so that's what we're filling out here. And a lot of the values, the elements of this structure, this swap chain desk, you can have a look at it if you right, right click and just go, go to definition. Yeah, there it is there. There it is where a lot of the <laughs> elements of this swap chain desk have um, reasonable uh, default values. So if you just zero the whole thing at the start, um, yeah, you'd be pretty much guaranteed to have reasonable default values of, uh, of zero. You do still have to fill a few of them out. Okay, width and height. Here's the first values that we'll fill out. So this is the resolution of your back buffer. Um, most of the swap chain, chain description Elements, the values of this structure are to do with the back buffer. So 800 by 600 means um, in pixels, 800 by 600 pixels, which happens to be the same as our screen or our window. Yeah, so up here a bit more, if you remember from last video, we set up a window of 800 by 600. Although according to it, this, uh, this function called just here, it will actually be um, slightly larger than 800 by 600. Uh, what you can do is put zero here and the window size uh, will be used to compute the width and height. Yeah, so that's just one instance of where this swap chain desk uses um, zero as useful value. So width and height can be set to zero and uh, DirectX will just have a look at whatever size the window is. All right, so that's the resolution of our back buffer. You can also get some really interesting old school graphics by making uh, very small back buffers. Yeah, you can. We'll have a bit of a look at that later on because you do need your um, viewport set up as well. The refresh rate. Okay, so the next parameter that we'll set is the refresh rate. So this is the um, uh, this is the frames per second that you want your app to run at. Uh, I'd suggest one over sixty. Yeah. So this is a fraction, numerator and denominator. I'd suggest one over sixty to mean sixty hertz. And it's a little bit weird because later on, um, when we actually come to render our image, uh, you can choose to vsync then. Yeah, so this parameter seems to me anyway to be largely ignored. Uh, but 1 over 60 is pretty good, so 60 frames a second. Other, other options there, you might do 1 over 100 to mean 100 frames per second. Uh, or you can put 0 over anything so any fraction that's equal to zero means no vsync and update your screen as quickly as possible so in that instance usually your uh, graphics card will just be you know going crazy and the monitor won't even be able to display the frames as quickly as the graphics card is updating them yeah so zero over one means uh, no vsync and that that's just you know one over zero that's illogical so don't don't put zero as your denominator yeah, it's a fraction and zero as a denominator is meaningless. Um, okay, the next value for our swap chain description, the pixel format. Uh, my only suggestion would be to use uh, this one and only this one. Yeah. I don't know why, but um, none of the cool pixel formats work. So I'd really like to do 128 bits per pixel floating point. Uh, format, but for one reason or another, you can't set your back buffer up like that. It just doesn't work. 
sad face. Yeah, use this uh, format just here. Good stuff. So this means um, 32 bits per pixel. Yeah, four channels, RGBA, and uh, eight, eight bits per, per pixel. Unsigned integers. Bytes, if you will. There's a whole heap of really, really cool pixel formats, and some of the others do work. So do have a look at this enum if you want. Yeah, and try some of the others out because, um, well, this is just, you know, this is, this, is, this is a boring pixel format. Some of the others do work. Have a bit of an explore, but yeah, none of the really cool ones work. Anyway, scan line order. Okay, I'm going to be honest and say I have no idea at all what this means. Uh, have a look at MSDN if you want to confuse yourself. Uh, or you can just be cool like me and put uh, DXGI mode unspecified. <laughs> I think it might be the order that the scan lines are swapped in the front and back buffers. So the back buffer could write from the top downwards to the front buffer, or it could write from the bottom upwards. I think, you know, I think that could be what it is. I don't know why they include it as an option. Um, scaling mode. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, we can set the scaling mode. So if your back buffer doesn't happen to be the same size as your front buffer, then obviously it could be scaled or stretched up to your front buffer. And this parameter um, lets us uh, specify a cool little option there. So, well, the two options are stretched, which means fill the entire uh, front buffer by stretching the back buffer. And the other one is centered, which will stretch your back buffer a little bit but it will also put a nice black border around it now yeah, it's up to you and the other thing about this is that you can't tell by looking at windowed mode we have to go to full screen mode in order to see this um, scaling happening uh, but we'll get to that eventually um, I think also that um, scaling unspecified seems to use the default, so that might actually be zero. Yeah, it is. So scaling unspecified is zero, and I think that means stretch. Yeah, I think that means stretch. So you'll get this one here. It'll fill up the whole screen when you're in full screen mode. When you're in windowed mode, it seems to just scale to your window no matter what. So good. <laughs> Uh, multi sampling. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, you can do multi sampling. So this is probably the two worst examples of multi sampling ever on the whole internet. So well done, well done, Creel. <laughs> no multi sampling. Uh, you supposedly get this staircase effect, and with multi sampling, uh, when your back buffers are copied, um, the graphics card will actually sample a few pixels uh, around each pixel, and will try and figure out some average of those sampled pixels and make Presumably a, a you know smoother transition, but in my example just here, the, the transition looks terrible, and the triangle's not even the same size, so yeah, bad example. But multi-sampling is all about using um, more than, what the, whoa, <laughs> what the, where did that come from? Oh my goodness, any disestablishmentarianism. Oh, it's there again. Oh, it's trying to spell check. I might just copy. Um, multi sampling is all about using more than one pixel and uh, averaging the results in order to produce a smoother scale. Uh, it's anti aliasing. I think it's a style of anti aliasing. So, some things that you do want to be careful with is um, when you change count here, you've only got a few options depending on your hardware. One means no multi sampling. Uh, two means pretty dodgy multi-sampling, so two pixels will be sampled for each pixel and then the average will be taken. Uh, four means four pixels will be sampled, so as you increase this number just here, make sure that it's only powers of two. And the other thing is that your graphics card will only be capable of um, you know, some certain multi-sampling amount. Uh, I think this graphics card in this machine might be capable of eight samples per pixel. Yeah, so I can change that up to eight if I want presumably really high quality multi sampling and I can't see that this quality parameter down here does anything at all so just type whatever you want there and um, yeah I don't know what it does have a look at MSDN it didn't mean anything to me but change the count yeah the count is multi sampling the higher this number here is the less performance you'll get yeah so 8 is uh, oh, 4 is probably, probably a pretty good number good Multi-sampling. 
Um, the buffer usage. Okay, so this is a nice and easy parameter. Our buffer is going to be a render target output. It's going to be uh, rendered to basically by the graphics card. So our buffer usage is uh, DXGI usage render target output. Good stuff. Dogs barking. Get them polls. Set the number of back buffers in the chain. So this is a little bit confusing to me, but I believe this means the number of back buffers. Yeah, I believe it means the number of back buffers. So this number doesn't include the front buffer. Yeah, but have a look at MSDN if I'm confusing it. And uh, yeah, good luck. I found it really confusing, but I think this is the number of back buffers. We always want to do double buffered graphics. Yeah, we always want to do double buffered graphics. So double buffered graphics is one back buffer and one front buffer. Yeah. Uh, buffer count equals one. Good stuff. Um, set the output window. Okay, so this parameter is nice and easy. Our output window is our hwind. Yeah, the handle to the window. So swap chain dot output window equals hwind. So that's the parameter that I passed at the start. Now I knew I knew we were going to need hwind. Uh, there it is. Swap chain desk output window equals hwind. Uh, set the swap chain to windowed. Okay, so even if you're running your, even if you intend to make a full screen app, I'd suggest that you set your swap chain to windowed just here with um, swap chain desk windowed equals true. Later on, we'll have a look at how to change to full screen mode, but we won't do it by changing this. Yeah, we won't do it by changing this. We'll call a function, this function down here, set full screen state. Okay, so windowed equals true since we're making a window app. And the swap effect. Okay, I have no idea at all what this does. No idea at all. It makes no difference um, really to what we're doing, excepting that unless you use discard, you can't use um, multi sampling. And multi sampling is pretty cool, so I'd suggest that you use discard. Uh, if you're making a Windows Store app, which you're probably not. Uh, but if you're making a Windows Store app, uh, I'd suggest that you just use the uh, project which is designed for Windows Store apps with Visual Studio. Uh, but you'll also have to use uh, Flip Sequential yeah, if you're making a Windows Store app. Let's just copy and paste. Um, swap effect discard. I think this is what happens to the data on the back buffer after it's swapped. Yeah, I think. Anyway. Yeah, but I think um, I just I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. Good, well done, good save. Um, f finally, describe the flags. We're not going to be using any flags at the moment, but we will use a bunch of flags later on. So one of the important flags that we'll probably use in the next few toots will be this uh, allow mode switch flag, which will allow the user to hit Alt Enter and go into full screen mode. Yeah. But for the time being, we'll just set our flags to zero. And there we have it, I think. We've got a filled out swap chain description. So there was a lot of options there. Um, later on, when we actually come to render something, um, you'll be able to play around with these options and see the difference. Uh, for the time being, yeah, there's nothing much else we can say. But uh, thanks for watching. All right, see ya.